All right, for the QBV room, number four, uh, we are joined today by Lofa Tupu. Lofa, thank you for joining us. Yeah, fellas, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Yeah, of course, man. For sure, for sure. We're gonna be today. We're gonna be talking about the importance of film, and um, as a football player, it's a very important aspect uh, of the game, of course. And Lofa is gonna be breaking down um, the importance of it in a couple of different plays as well. All right. So this is a quick introduction. If you already don't know who Lofa Tupu is, um, this is he's actually his second podcast with us too. So. Um, he was a second rounder out of USC originally, uh, six year NFL linebacker, five with the Seahawks, one with the Falcons. Uh, he coached the Seahawks linebackers for a season as well. And he's also the co founder of Zone in CBD. Um, so, you know, he has extensive knowledge with, with the game, which is, you know, perfect to talk about the importance of film. Exactly. So basically, we just had a quick question for you. Like, uh, what's your mindset heading into a film session? Like, how do you get the most out of a film session? You got to break it into, you know, you got to break it into compartments, fellas. I mean, whether situationally, you know, first and second down, runs and passes, um, third down. That's how we always did it was, you know, you, you start to get formations and personnel that they like to run and you categorize them like, you know, and I, for those of you that don't understand what I talk about when I'm saying personnel, you know, we always go number of backs. So there's five skilled guys and it's always going number of backs and then tight end. And then, so whatever that is, plus the other, the receivers. So uh, for instance, if they say 21 personnel, that's two backs and one tight end. And that means you have two other receivers and X and a Z out there. It always has to equal five. All right. For, for any beginner, you know, I'm trying to break it down to the simplest terms, you know, mm -hmm. I didn't even know that going into college, you know, as wild as that is. Um, <laughs> so then, um, you know, when you start to cat group those and you'll start to see some definite trends. And, um, and what I mean is there's percentages of what they like to, they like to run the ball out of this formation. They like to pass out of, out of these, you know, formations and personnel packages and that gives you a jump start of what the coordinator is thinking when they send in the play. And, um, you know, that's so that is really how I used to break film down is down personnel and um, and then so forth. Awesome. So uh, when you watch film by yourself versus like with your with a group of linebackers or like as a team setting, like how do those two different film sessions, but how do those two film sessions differ? Yeah, so with a team or even a group, you know, you, you want to point out the strength of the opponent and really, you know, how they're trying to attack you, you know, um, you know, what, what do they do well, what kinds of runs, what kind of passes, you know, are they downhill, right, you know, like, you got to go, you know, shoot gaps and make sure, keep the integrity of that line of scrimmage, you know, Anthony, I know you're an offensive lineman, and the biggest sure. thing to do, when, when linebackers just sit back there and hang out, man, you guys are sitting on the double teams and pushing that line of scrimmage. And then the running back has a two-way go in any any gap he wants to go. So um, trying to find out how they want to attack you, they, you know, they, you're going to know, you already know based on you have the defenses that, you know, you always go home to. Like if you're a cover two team, you're a cover two team that mixes in some quarters, you know, 40, three underneath, and maybe even some cloud coverages to one side. But you still predominantly stay too high. And, and then you're going you're gonna to know what alleys they want to attack. Those outside verticals, four verts, puts a lot of stress on the middle backer, you know, covering deep third. So I want to know as a group together how we're going to get attacked and, you know, and how we're going to, you know, take routes on and, uh, and, and fit up runs. So basically just trying to get on the same page with everybody when you're, like, in that group setting? Yeah, versus – when you're in the individual, now I'm attacking my matchups. Okay. It's going to be the center. It's going to be the guard as a middle linebacker. You know, I'm rarely going to go up against the tackle um, unless he misses his block and it's an outside hitting play, like a toss sweep or, or outside zone. You know, that, that's the only potential matchup, you know, that could happen, but I'm going to work on looking at the center. Does he, does he have any telltales when he snaps? Some of them, we're human, you know, by nature, we, we, we're creatures of habit. There's some centers, 
because I don't know, whatever, they got into a habit when they were young, wiggling their fingers before the snap. And then right before the snap, they stop. And it's like, okay, here comes the snap. And like, those are, those are little telltales. Um, it's all, you know, like it's studying body language to, to an extent where you can get a jump on the snap count. That's important. Why? Because if you're a defensive lineman, that's going to key your get off. If you're a blitzer, that's going to say, Hey, this is when it's time to, to move towards, you know, my target or my, or my gap. Um, and there's those little things that I know there's a receiver in the NFL right now. I'm not going to name names, but every time it's a pass play and he breaks the huddle, he fixes his mm. gloves. Yep. All right. And when it's not, he just goes and lines up. If I'm the DB, I'm yelling, yo, here, here comes a pass. Yo, here comes a pass. <laughs> and that little key just makes you play so much faster. Yeah. So that was actually like exactly kind of my next question is like, obviously film studies way more than X's, X's and O's. Like, how do you like, like you just said, like focusing on like the center guard uh, receiver, for example, like picking up on those little nuances and stuff like that, that can put you, how does that put you in the right position on the field? Yeah, because now you, you have a, you have a jump start on it. And so you, you know, you know where the play is going, you know what they're trying to do. So now, it's really just a matter of catching the ball, you know, or, or shooting the gap and, and trying to get the strip because, you know, we're not trying to just stop the ball here. We're trying to take the ball off of them. That's what, yeah. what the best do. And so, um, you know, any kid out there, you know, go watch the guys that are really great at taking the ball away because um, you got to see how they get themselves into position, you know, um, you know, how they bait the quarterback to throw that ball and jump in front and zone coverage. You know, if they're daring enough in man coverage, you don't want to look back. But if you're in, once you get in position, you, you can look, you know, for that ball. And, you know, you have to find out because that's a, that's a lot of things. I see guys that they're great up until the moment of truth. And that we call that is like where either the receiver or the linebacker or the, you know, the defensive back is going to make a play. Um, yeah. the receiver going to catch it or you're going to break it up or catch it yourself. And so I think a lot of people, they get into that position, but then they feel like the job's done. They don't know how to get, you know, transition to undercutting a route. If it's a flat route, they call it an interception because you're intercepting the angle of the pass. <laughs> so, so, you know, it's not flat. Once you get in position and you're on that top shoulder, top hip, you can cut downhill towards the ball which, you know, as if he throws it flat, that's a pick and you're going the other way. So there's little things that you just got to continually watch the best and try to take, you know, situations that you get into um, and, and react the way they, they did. Yeah, 100%, 100%. All right, so now we're gonna, now we're gonna get into breaking down um, a play of, of Russell Wilson's from a couple of years ago and we'll just kind of have you, you know, Talk, talk us through what he's thinking and um, what caused him to uh, make the decision that he made. Bill, what a great smile. <laughs> <laughs> I don't right. think smiling much anymore. Fellas, <laughs> what do we notice about the situation? Talk to me about the look. look I want you, where are they at in the field? Time on the clock? You know, yep. Score? What, what do we got going on here? Yep. So they're so obviously. Up, go ahead, Mike. They're around, you know, around the forty-five yard line. Seahawks are down six points currently. A minute, minute and twenty-seven seconds left. They got one timeout, um, and of course, obviously, they're, they're trying to score that touchdown and get that extra point to to take the lead at at this point in the game. Okay, so with that in mind, one timeout. We got New England is in what cover two, right? I can't yep. see the. Four. Three, it's two, um, two high safeties right here. Yeah. Okay. Now, what the middle of the field, the 40 to the 40, is predominantly known as shot territory. All right. And being down a touchdown, you know they're going to take a shot. So they got their fastest receiver down here at the bottom. And it looks like they're going play action, correct? Correct. Yep. Okay. Do so you press play? Now, I know that's beast mode back there. So it might hold a little bit, you know, the, the guys, you know, the linebackers, I, I would have liked them to play a little off more. Who's that? My man Mayo down here. Look at that. No, that that's uh, spikes. 
this is male. Look at male holding his ground because he knows. He goes, yeah, right. that, that's BS, man. That's that's not a. They're not going to run the ball with a minute twenty six and one timeout. So great job by my man Mayo, who's going to be a coordinator pretty. I mean, he's going to be a head coach pretty soon. Um, so Russ fakes the play action, it holds everybody, and you know we can't see the full film, but it did hold the near side safety. So now you can go ahead and press play. It held the safety, Sydney. You know, deep, deep drop back. I mean, that's seven plus steps, and he just uncorks one. And you can't, you know, a minute twenty-seven. You can't let anything behind you as a safety. Um, and and so that was, that was the shot that that I think won the game, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it's situationally knowing, you know, just knowing knowing what what to do and uh, not falling, especially minute twenty-seven. You got to play deep. Exactly. Exactly. And just for me, thinking as a quarterback from Russell's standpoint, he's before the play, he's identifying those two safeties, right? As a too high cover two look. And he does a fantastic job with the play action. And that's something that he was doing the whole game. Um, after all of his runs, he was carrying out his fakes and, um, you know, with obviously with beast mode being back there, they were a little, you know, a little worried about him running the ball. And obviously it pays off for them um, being able to score this shot play and, and get that touchdown. Yeah, I guarantee you, Bill's still horrified about this play. For sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Awesome, awesome. So now we're going to go into um, watching one of your plays. How about that picture? I know, look at that. <laughs> look at that at it. Fire so in that, the eyes, baby. That should be the picture that you lead with. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? Oh God! Here. Don't shut that. Good. <laughs> Sean Andrews knocking me out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is the uh, the opening play of the game against Philly on the road. They go empty. Now, from all the times playing empty, we're a quarters team. So when a team goes empty. It's an isolation against the Mike linebacker. Um, they, that's the matchup they want with, you know, sometimes it's a slot receiver. It's been Welker in the past. It's been, um, you know, a running back, Ladanian, some, you know, somebody else. It's been a really good – LJ Smith was a great tight end. And But the thing is, so I have this guy, if he breaks out, if he goes vertical, it's pretty much a zone coverage that now turns into man coverage. I have him deep if he goes vertical because it's really it's quarters it's four high and uh and they're taking away my my flat players so when before the snap i fake blitz and then my man julian peterson up top he faked blitz too and because we were bringing pressures from that and uh my guy Dion grant was good at holding the shell and showing down for like like it was going to be a zone blitz and um so here as i retreated on the snap I read the stem of the, the tight end. You can let it play. Now, at five yards, so right now, I kind of shut it down right here. I stopped drifting. I don't want to give any ground. And right there, we can't see it, but I know I've already passed the threat of the stick route, which is five yards and out. And that's, you know, if he doesn't come flat at me now, there's not, you know, and run the Zorro or what we call the jerk route, then you're going to get, a vertical route now, which is either going to be a five yard stick, 10 yard stick, or a vert. They saw us in four deep. And so they knew, all right, if we just run five verts here, or, you know, what, if we run everybody vertical, that safety shouldn't, you know, pull over the top. My safety, Deion Grant, is such a skilled safety that he was like, hey, if you get the guy to go vertical, I'll take the deep threat. You look back for the, you know, the straight, the flat line throw. So I go, then we, you know, because we had been playing together, you know, for a while at that point. And um, it just, that's what happens with a lot of film study is like you get to take shots because you know where your help is. So uh, we did it to a couple other teams too. Uh, I didn't catch the ball. I just broke it up, of course. But so, <laughs> so here I, I ran with them. I head whipped and the ball was right there for, for me, to, me to catch. And is that... Is that something that you – I mean, again, for, that was first play of the game, right? So is that something that you did a lot of preparation going into with, with film work that you were kind of expecting that to come off right off the bat? Or 
Um, yeah, it, it, it's, um, it's an understanding of concepts and how they want to attack you. And so as soon as, you know, a team goes empty, that's, that's their, when you, they know your quarters predominantly, like, like I said, you're, that's what we called home. We're always going to go home. If things get hairy, like we're going to, we'll employ different, you know, game plans all the time. But when things break down and the offense is having success, we're just going to go straight players, take all the guesswork out, and we're going to see match up, you know, best versus best, big on big, and see see who's going to come out the winner. Because that's I think that's really what Pete and the Seahawks did so well for so many years was they're like, yo, we are cover three, we are cover three, we are cover three. You get us out of it. And when they had the pass rush and, and the Legion of Boom, you couldn't get them out of it, man. Like they were they yeah. were just the hell out of everybody. Yeah. It was incredible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, you know, that's um that's 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 what film study and everything does is you know, it just makes you uh that much better. And that's what I'm saying. I knew I was in phase, I could take the chance. And um, you know, that comes through watching and uh preparation and knowing, you know, the moment of truth. Okay, I'm in position, go get it. Yep. Yep. hundred percent. hundred percent. Well, awesome. All right. Well, that's, that's pretty much, um, that's pretty much all we have. Thank you very much, Lofa, for taking some time and uh, talk about the ports and film and some breakdown. Yeah, man, we'll do it again sometime. Get some more, some more clips and uh, we'll break down some more film. Absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. Thanks again, man. Really appreciate it. All right.